Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today we are continuing on with the 31 days of Fabaween, and we are continuing also with the Stephen Summers mini movie, monster movie, marathon, creature feature, marathon, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to be talking about the mummy returns today which is a good sequel i've always liked this movie i've always thought it was a good solid follow-up um you know I've, i actually uh no i saw i saw them in the order yeah i saw them in the order that they came out i'm pretty sure uh yeah i definitely did what am i what am i talking about i don't know anyway sorry um but this is a sequel that i thought was just as good as the first. I don't know which one I like more uh, after watching uh, both of these uh, back to back for the for the course or yeah for the for the course yeah the horse is a horse of course for the purpose of these reviews. Um, yeah, I don't know which one I like more. I think both the first two are pretty solid. They're they're good. It's a good double feature. It's a good you know. Night of the Movies or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I'm not sure which one I like more. But this is how you do sequels correctly, at least in my opinion. But anyway, before we jump into this, as always, if anybody would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. Just please think about it. Think before you send it in, if you're not sure about something, just ask. Okay? Just ask. If you Did you review this before? Did you not? Did you talk about this? Did you talk about that? Sorry. Um, just ask. Okay? And please, 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 I cannot stress this enough because people are not listening. Please send it in as family and friends. It's not that difficult. Okay? If you send it in as goods and services, PayPal takes a cut of it, all right? Just please send it in as family and friends. It's not that big of a deal. Um, if you don't, I will refund it to you, and you can try to send it back in. Or not, whatever. It's your choice. Um, it does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, <clears throat> cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, ranch streams commentaries and anything in between that's what the paid request is set up for so again if anybody is interested go ahead send it in and i will get to it as soon as i possibly can for those of you that have sent them in before thank you i greatly appreciate it, it means you guys actually care about what i say and do here on the channel you want to see me try some different things it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win win for everybody Excuse me. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. Now, The Mummy Returns actually uh, was bigger than the first. It made more money than the first, both, both uh, in America and uh, throughout the world. I... Do you remember when this came out in the theater? I did not see it. This was a big summer when this came out. I forgot to mention a couple things about the first movie, which we'll cover. But the first movie is kind of looked at as the, the first film that started May as the unofficial start of the summer movie season. Because before that, before that first Mummy came out, June through August early you know labor day june through the beginning of september was typically looked at as the summer season all your big movies all your big summer hits came out in those months and the, i'm not saying that the mummy was the first big summer movie but it was the first one that came out in may at least that kind of kicked off what we know as now now people look at may through labor day you know the beginning of, as the whole summer movie season but the mummy was kind of the first one to kick that off 
Uh, this one came out in May as well. It, it did very well. It, again, it, it made more uh, than the first movie, whether it was domestically or uh, at the worldwide box office. When the DVD came out, the DVD was huge. That was, I think, the fastest selling DVD at the time. I believe Gladiator. I believe it broke Gladiator's record because I think at the time Gladiator held the record. This one broke that, and I just find it crazy that the Mummy movies have made over a billion dollars in home video revenue. VHS, the first movie, Laser Disc, DVD. Uh, that's crazy. And again, like the first film was the highest selling VHS of that year with seven million copies sold. That's fucking crazy. I have it on VHS in the other room, but it's just crazy to me. Oh, speaking of that, I think back in the day, I think I had a friend of mine, good good friend, sometimes he comes on the streams, one of my closest friends. I think he might have had the first one on VHS when we were kids. I think he did. I think we used to watch it all the time. Pretty sure he did. Anyway, I that just randomly came to me. So this was a big deal. This was a huge movie, and 2001 was actually a pretty big year summer, because you had this, you had Jurassic Park 3, which came out, I think, a month or two, I think that was July, I think that came out two months later. You had Rush Hour 2, which I love, um, you know, you had a bunch of good sequels, and Universal actually did very very well that year because they had this they had jurassic park 3 which i know people don't like but it still made money they had fast and the furious which i think was the month after this because somebody corrected me because i thought fast and the furious came out in the spring and actually came out in june i did look it up after uh the joyride review because somebody corrected me and said it came out in june um that was a big hit so they were doing pretty good because like I said in the first vi in the in the first video first review Universal was hurting at that time they looked at the mummy as kind of the make it or break it movie and luckily it, it made it so that's pretty cool but this was a big deal when this came out this was a very highly anticipated highly you know hot ticket movie as they call it um, but I think I'll just talk about this and get it out of the way. The biggest problem with this movie, and you already know what I'm going to say, it's kind of false advertising <laughs> with The Rock. So this was The Rock's first film. And he got paid a lot of money. I think he got paid. I think he actually held the record. I don't know if he, if that, I'm sure the record's not been broken, but he got paid, he broke the record for highest paycheck for the first first movie. He got paid $5 million to be in this. $5 million of the budget went to The Rock. And I don't think that record's been broken. And he has four and a half minutes of screen time. I counted. I looked at the, at the time stamp when I watched the film. Now, I'm not talking about the shitty CGI at the end of the movie. The first four and a half minutes of the movie he's in. That's it. And he got paid $5 million to do it. Not a bad not a bad gig. But they put... I remember when this came out. They pushed it. They hyped it. WWF really pushed it. They really hyped it at the time. And, you know, that was kind of the big selling point at, at the time that this movie came out. And he's only in the movie for four minutes. It's kind of false advertising. And he doesn't really do much. I mean, he stands there and yells. And then he kills a couple of the monsters. And then he's like walking through the desert. He eats the scorpion. And then he's just like standing there and then he dies. And then he comes back as CG at the end. So I think a lot of people were really disappointed in seeing that. Because they wanted The Rock to be in the movie fighting and kicking ass. And we didn't get that till the next year when they did The Scorpion King. So that I think is the biggest problem with the film because especially when it came when it first came out for those of you that don't remember or, or those of you that were not alive when that happened they really pushed that. I remember when the 
the hype and the and the promotion and the marketing and everything they really based it around the rock and wwf they really pushed that like the rock was in it and this that the other thing um and then they because he did wrestlemania and then i think for wrestlemania he got hurt after wrestlemania he got hurt he got injured in the storyline so he could do all the promotion for the movie and then he came back but they you know they made such a big deal about that and it's kind of a nothing burger it's just two slices of bread and then we wouldn't really see that until the next year when he did the scorpion king which I actually do like the scorpion king um that movie has a killer soundtrack but i'm not and i'm not going to talk about those movies now they don't really fit in in this kind of realm they're more like just sword and sorcery films but we'll we'll cover at least the first movie i'll cover some point down the road i don't know about the sequels they made like 15 sequels and obviously he's in none of them i think one of them is a prequel the rest are sequel i don't know um you know you know how it is but anyway but that i think i just wanted to get that out of the way because i think that is the biggest problem with the movie is it's false advertisement. I mean, I'm surprised that they didn't get sued for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he's on the poster. He was in all the marketing, you know, the toys, everything. And, and then they... It's like, no, he's not really in it. So, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, whatever George Bush said anyway. But, you know, I do like the plot to this one. I like... Now, it is weird... Because they do that movie time. It only came out two years after the first movie. But yet it takes place, I think, eight years later. But the kid is eight years old. Which doesn't make any fucking sense. But it's that movie shit. You know how it is. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. But the movie picks up um, Rick, Brendan Fraser, and Evie, the lovely... Rachel Wise, they are now married and they have a son, Alex. Um, the movie opens up, they're on an adventure, they find, you know, the uh, Scorpion King's bracelet, and whoever uses that will have these visions, and they will be able to find out where they need to go and control the armies of Anubis and everything like the Scorpion King did. There is an evil cult. Because like every adventure film, you know, every monster type of movie, there has to be some kind of evil cult out there that wants all the power in the world. So there's this evil cult. They want the bracelet because they want to resurrect Imhotep, which they do, so they can use him to fight the Scorpion King. And the bracelet will tell them where they need to go. And if... Imhotep defeats the Scorpion King, he will control the army and take over the world. So that's basically it. Um, the Alex, the son, he puts it on. The bad guys kidnap him. Rick, Evie, and Jonathan go after him. This time we have a new friend, Izzy, which helps out, an old friend of Rick's. And Ardith Bay shows back up because, of course, he is part of the Magi. They do add some layers to it. They do reveal that Rick is part of the Magi. He is basically the Chosen One. He is the Warrior of God, which I do like that they added a little bit of religious overtones in there. I enjoyed that. If they did that today, all the retards would get upset and cry and complain. But in 2001, you could still put stuff like that in movies and people would be okay with it. Um... Evie starts to have these visions uh, from a previous life. You find out in a previous life she was the daughter of the Pharaoh and she was the rival to uh, Imhotep's lover. They do reincarnate her physically, which I thought was cool. So they brought back uh, Patricia Velasquez from the first movie. I liked how they did that. And they have a little bit of a, of a rivalry there, which is cool. Um, so I like that they added a little little extra meat to the bone on there. And then it just kind of follows suit with the first movie, except this is more of a kind of a road movie, them going to a, a rescue mission, so to speak. So I like that they kind of tweaked it, you know, ever so slightly. 
but it's got good stuff. Again, I like the story. I, I like the new characters. I like that they brought back pretty much all the principal characters from the first movie. Like I said, Poli uh, sorry, Patricia, Palisqua is not a word. Patricia <laughs> Velasquez, that is her real name. <laughs> I liked that they you know, brought her back as the reincarnation. And, and she had more to do in this movie, so that was cool. I thought that was interesting. I liked that you uh, kind of got to see more of Emotep in the flesh, even though you don't see him until over an hour into the film. But that second hour, you do get to see pretty much him just in the flesh in the first movie. It took a little bit longer to get to that, but I understand. So, yeah, I mean, I like that it kind of took everything that you liked about the first movie and beefed it up because that's what sequels are supposed to do. Um, well, that's what they used to do. Now, it's just the same movie over and over and over again, and people keep, excuse me, keep paying to see this shit. Like all the Marvel films, it's the same movie 20 times. But y'all paid for it. Anyway, here's Wonder Woman. I'm just kidding. No. Um, and I'm saying that because they're in the Oasis in this movie. Uh, excuse me. Um, now my my Because I'm like... You know, I like the movie so much, my throat's making weird noises. I profusely apologize for that. But because the first movie was such a big hit, a runaway hit, they greenlit it immediately. The next day, the movie opened on a Friday. Saturday morning, Stephen Summers got the call. Yeah, we kind of would like you to do a sequel. Oh, okay, I'll be there. So they, they started work on it immediately, which is good. Like I said, with sequels... I think, just in my opinion, I think if you do two to four years, if you're in the two to four year range to get it done, you'll be good. After, Before that and after that, that's when it gets a little difficult. Like, There's been sequels that have come out a year later that don't work or are not as successful. Um, Halloween 5 came out a year later. I like Halloween 5 for what it is. I understand why people don't like it. And the movie's not perfect. It has its problems. Elm Street, The Dream Child, came out a year later after Part 4. I like it. I know people don't, but that's okay. Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze came out a year later, but I think that movie worked and it made just, you know, it made slightly less than the first movie, but it still did very well when it came out. Um... You know, but and then after that four year mark, five plus years, then you start okay, is it necessary? Does it work? Did the, you know that kind of thing? But I think that the movie, of course, it got fast tracked to get done and everything, and that's fine, it worked because I think it's a good sequel. You had the same people in front of the camera and behind the camera that made it work as well, you know, and. They just took everything that people liked about the first movie, beefed it up, added some different layers, added some different elements to it, and hey, it worked, man. That's all you need. You don't need to go in different directions and, and like, why don't we do this? Why don't we send them to space? Would that be cool? You know, shit like that. Um, I think a lot of sequels try to do that or... It's just the same movie again, you know, like a lot. I think a lot of the Marvel stuff is like, and I know people get mad at me, but you can get mad all you want. Um, it's the truth. But I like that they did that. Again, Stephen Summers, I've always liked as a director. I think he's underrated. I really like his work. And I think that this movie shot well. Again, uh, I gotta stop doing that shit. Uh, bigger budget so they had more to play with but i do think it looks good i think that the lighting the one thing i really liked about the first movie was the lighting and i do like the lighting in this one as well now this one they're more in the desert through most of the movie which is nice so you can use all natural lighting um when they get inside yeah you can you can play with some things there and and try some different things which is nice but I, I, I do think he is a very good filmmaker. I think he's pretty underrated. I do like the way that the movie is shot. Now, because they had a bigger budget, because they had more money to play with, there is a lot more CGI 
in this movie than the first one. Uh, I can give the movie the pass on it. It's 2001. I don't think it really particularly looks that good, but everything else in the movie is good, and there's still a lot of practical stuff. Uh, you know, the beginning, they're in this tomb, all practical. Uh, at the end, all the sets, practical. I love the the action sequences in their house, all practical. When they're in the, the museum, most of that's practical. When they resurrect the mummy warriors, which I like that they did that, but I like that it was only one part of the movie. I like that they didn't have them throughout the entire film. They added some different, like the pygmy guys, which I love. I like that they put those guys in there. Um, when Brendan Fraser is fighting them on the bus, that's a stunt guy. That's none of that CG. When Oded Fur fights his guy, yeah, most of that's practic or CG. But um, you know, there's some practical stuff in there. You know, uh, again, the stuff with the train is practical, which I love. You know, there's sets and and there's still a good amount of practical effects in this movie. Like I said, there's more CGI because they had a bigger budget, they had more money to play with, and that's fine. I get it. I don't think it really looks that good. I didn't think it looked that good then, but I can give the movie the pass because it has a good story and a good director, good acting, and there's a bunch of practical. Even like the flashback stuff, a lot of that's practical. I think pretty much all that was practical. When Evie's fighting with the daggers and stuff, I think that was all practical. So you have plenty of that, like the first movie did. Uh, I think, again, going back to Deep Rising, that had more than the Mummy movies, but it it's okay. You know, I understand. But, you know, it would have been nice if maybe these movies had a little bit more, but hey, I take what I can get. I forgot to mention in the, in the previous movie and in Deep Rising, I really like the musical scores in both of those because they were done by Jerry Goldsmith. Now, Jerry Goldsmith did not do this movie because he actually did a show in London. He was playing a concert, and he played some of the music from The Mummy, and he said, you know, he introduced, hey, we're going to do this next, and he goes, the, the movie that this is from is a real piece of shit. Stephen Summers was in the audience. He didn't know that, and he was asked not to come back. But they do get Alan Silvestri to do the music, which I do like. I've always enjoyed his work. He's done music for some of my favorite films of all time, including Predator and the Back to the Future films. Um, I love Alan Silvestri's work. I always have. So it was cool that they did that. Like I'm sorry that Jerry Goldsmith felt that way because I do enjoy his musical score from the first film. Uh, he was He was still... One of my all-time favorites. I mean, come on, he did the Rambo films. Um, but, you know, Jerry had his opinion, and that <laughs> him voicing him his opinion cost him his job, because I'm sure if he didn't say that, they probably would have asked him to come back for this. But, oh well. But I do like the musical score. I do like the song. Um, this movie actually had a song, uh, Forever May Not Be Long Enough, by the band Live. Uh, the same band that did Lightning Crashes, which is a great song. But I did enjoy that. The music video is included on this Blu-ray, which is pretty cool. Um, I think the version on the soundtrack is different from the version that's in the end credits. Or, you know how it is. It's different mixings and stuff like that. But, oh well. Um, I The cast did fine. Um, you know, again, you bring back the, the core people from the previous movie, the the core three, or I guess five if you count uh, Patricia Velasquez, but I thought everyone did fine. Uh, Brendan Fraser, Rachel Wise, John Hanna, their chemistry got better. Uh, their chemistry was good in the first movie, but in this it's better because they had already worked together and then their characters relationships got closer and better in this i love steven summers on the commentary track said he wanted jonathan to never to not learn anything he wanted him to be exactly the same as he was in the first movie and it works and i love it but as the movie progressive he kind of changes a little bit which is nice 
I didn't think the little boy was annoying. I thought he did fine. I really liked the stuff between him, and I'm not going to say his full name because I'm going to butcher it, but Adwale, is, I know that's how you say his first name. But the stuff that they, the scenes with them together is really fun. I'm sure there's outtakes or bloopers or, or, or you know, I'm pretty sure they have stories about them getting along because you could tell when you watch the film. Um... Arnold Vosloo does fine. He, he gets a little bit more to do in this film. I like Patricia Velasquez. Again, she gets more to do, which is nice. Uh, the guy that played the cult leader, he is in Van Helsing. He would work with Stephen Summers again. But I didn't realize that guy is in a shit ton of movies. He's in Split Second. I didn't know that. I was like, cool, because I looked it up. But I like him, you know, as this cult leader. You know, you two must sacrifice yourselves for me <laughs> and these two idiots believe him um Adwale did fine the three goon characters were fun I like when they pull the guns and he's pointing at the guy's head and the other guy moves it I just so I just crack up every time I see that um the guy that played Izzy was fun I kind of wish there was a little bit of more of him in the movie technically it would be six principal cast members if you count Oded Fair Oded Fair did great. It, I like that he was in the movie more. Um, I like the improvement of their chemistry as well, especially him and Brendan Fraser. The scene when they're getting the guns out of the car and uh, Brendan Fraser goes, would you like the shotgun? And he goes, I prefer the Thompson. I wrote that. So when I was in school, you know how you would get like notebooks and folders. I would always write movie quotes on my my notebooks or my folders or whatever because I would just get bored. And on one of my folders, I remember I wrote that quote. I wrote, you know, would you like the shotgun? No, I prefer the Thompson. <laughs> this is what I did as a child. See, I've always been like this. It just gets worse as I get older. <laughs> but, you know, it's always good to see him. And he's another guy that, yeah, he's in a bunch of stuff, but I don't know why he never became bigger. That's just me. I just I just like his work. I just don't understand why he was never a bigger bigger name, bigger star. Um, that's just my opinion. But the cast is fine. Again, everybody has good chemistry. I like that the majority of the cast is the is the people from the first movie, and then the new people do fine. Um, you know, I do. Again, I like uh, along with the first movie and Deep Rising, they. These movies go at really good paces. I think Van Helsing kind of suffers a little bit, which we'll cover that in not the next video, but a couple of videos down the road here. And I do like that film, but it has its problems. Um, but I, the Mummy films and Deep Rising, you know, because Bob uh, du, Duque, Duque, I'm sorry, Duque, was the editor on all three, and the commentary with him and Stephen Summers is really fun. Um, you could just tell that they had a blast doing the movie and the commentary track. And we'll get more into that in a little bit here. But him and Stephen Summers worked really well together. And those three films are edited really good. They cut at really good paces. This movie is two hours and ten minutes. Even back then, even when I was a kid watching this, it never felt like that. It never felt that it was that long. It always went really quickly. Same with the first movie. I've always felt that the first movie cut really good. It didn't feel like it was over two hours. Like, you blink and it's, it's already over. It's like, oh, two hours went by pretty quickly. Not so bad. But the, the pace in these movies is really good, too. It's just boom, 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 boom. Especially this one. You know, you get the little intro with the Scorpion King, five minutes. They're, get, they're in there trying to get this bracelet, ten minutes. They go home. It kind of slows down for a little bit. Then they have this great action scene in their in their house. Slows down a little bit for a minute or two. Then they're, you know, in the museum having a shootout. And then they get on the double decker bus because the movie takes place in England. You have to have an action scene with a double decker bus. I love it. It's awesome. You know, then it kind of slows down a bit. The kid gets kidnapped. They got to go find him. Picks back up, and it just they they cut really good. There, it's a really good pace, which is a problem with what movies have today, is there's no pacing. They're too long. You have to edit. People don't know how to do that anymore. Um, but I, I like the action scenes, again, the ones I just mentioned. 
I like when they're going to getting closer to the temple and they're in like the bushes and they're fighting everybody when Oded Fair fights a Dwale and kills him and the the little pygmy guy again I know they're CG well not all of them they did do puppets of them because you see them in the special features but I like the little pygmy guys I thought that was cool I like that they didn't have just the mummy warrior guys again like in the beginning they did but it was only a few of them it's like okay but I like that they had different monsters they had different creatures because that's what you want to do you don't want to have the same shit over and over and over again because people get tired of that so they learned which is nice um you know I like the 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 practical stuff when it is the Scorpion King at the end, when Imhotep and, and uh, Rick are fighting, that stuff is all good. And I like that they keep looking at each other. They're like, here, there, here. They keep looking back at each other. I thought that was fun. The CG for the Scorpion King is awful. That, I think, got made fun of as soon as the movie came out. And I found out that they only had eight days to do it, and it was like pretty much right before the movie had to be done like we're sending the prince to the theater tomorrow like this needs to get done i don't know what happened i don't know why it took so long um apparently brendan fraser was like really nice to the special effects people at the premiere and they didn't have the heart to tell him like it's gonna look like shit because we didn't have time to do it but that's just brendan fraser being a nice guy um I think I pretty much covered everything. But yeah, that CG was fucking terrible. Um, I actually had the DVD forever because when I was a kid, it might I don't might have been like I don't think it was right when the DVD came out, but it was close. But I went to Toys R Us of all places and I got the DVD and the video game. It was a two pack. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. And it was, I think, around Christmas, because when I was a kid, uh, people, you know, people would always ask me, what do you want for Christmas? Well, just give me a, give me a gift card. You know, don't give me a, even now I'm like that, you know, I've never been, I've never really been greedy, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not a greedy person. You know, people, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for, just, just give me a gift card give me cash, you know, I don't, I don't want you guys going out and spending, you know, all your money on me, you know, I'm not important, <laughs> you know, don't worry about me, um, but, uh, yeah, just, you know, slip me a gift card, slip me 20 bucks, you know, it's, it doesn't matter to me, but I would always get a gift card to Toys R Us, you know, when Toys R Us was a thing, and I went, and I got that, now, I don't have the PlayStation 2 game anymore, I just could never really figure out how to play it. I did think it was kind of cool because you could play as Rick or Imhotep. So I liked that they had that. But I could just never really figure out how to play that game. So I got rid of it. But I do have the, the PlayStation 1 game for the first movie. And I do like that game. That game is pretty fun. I just beat that for the first time earlier this year. Maybe I'll play it again. I don't know. Um, but I had that DVD forever. And I used to watch this a lot back then and I didn't get the first movie on DVD till later because I could never find the ultimate edition because that one had some ec more extra features on it I didn't get that till later but the first movie it's not like the first movie was never on you know it was like always on TV or whatever um, but I had that DVD for quite a while I think that was one of the first DVDs that I got actually back in the day um, God, I wish, you know, I really wish that, well, not maybe not YouTube, but I wish that I would, I filmed a lot more of this kind of stuff when I was a kid, just to see the evolution of movies and stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't really think of that as a kid. I was, you know, too busy being a kid, you know, having fun. Uh, but I do wish at times, you know, I could keep track of my physical media stuff a little, a little bit, you know, more in depth back then but i guess hey nothing wrong with that i was too busy being a kid enjoying myself but yeah i had that dvd for quite a while now unfortunately there were a couple features that did not make it to this blu-ray but i have them cataloged I, I did archive them 
There was a really cool feature. I don't know why they didn't put it on the Blu-ray. But when the movie came out at Universal Studios, I think in Hollywood, they had a exhibit. They had different props and like different rooms and stuff. And they had actors. And they had like a walkthrough of that on the DVD. And for whatever reason, it's not on this Blu-ray. Uh, but I do have that same. It might be here on YouTube somewhere. I don't know. But that was pretty cool. But the Blu-ray has most of the features. The commentary is really fun with uh, Stephen Summers and Bob uh, Duke Say. And then it's got... Because I guess this one and the first one came out when the third movie did. So you have a sneak preview of that. And then everything else is on there. The music video is on here. The making of... The, out, the outtakes are really funny. I, I always watch those. Um, but at the end of the day, you know... I always really liked this. I always thought that this was a good, solid sequel. Um, you know, as much as as I was talking about in the previous video, a, as much as people, you know, put the first movie in like this, the pedestal, like, ha, Mahenya, here's the mummy, uh, you know, shit like that. Nobody ever really talks about this one anymore. For a movie that came out, it made a lot of money. It actually broke records when it came out. I think it was highest opening weekend I think Lost World Jurassic Park had that and then this movie broke that same company you know the DVD was really huge I'm sure the VHS sold well too but nobody really talks about this one but I always liked it and again which one do I like more the first or the second there was a time when I said this one there was definitely a time when I said I like this more than the first but now I don't know, and I watched them both er earlier, you know, of course, get ready for these videos, but I don't know, I really have to sit down and think about that. Which do I prefer? But both are good. I, I've always really enjoyed both. I think they're solid, fun, action-adventure, horror, monster, creature feature, whatever you want to call them. They're good to watch around this time of the year. This is good stuff. Can't complain. Now, the next video, I have never seen the third film. I kind of gave up, so we'll see what I think about that one. I don't think people really like it. It made money. It made a profit, but we'll see. Oh, and there was also a comic book. They did, it was supposed to be a miniseries, but I think the publisher went out of business before the second issue came out, but I do have the one comic book they did. It was like a prequel story to this. I have that upstairs somewhere. And then when the third movie came out, I think they did another comic book. I think I have that too. But we'll cover that next time. But anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. Most importantly, take care of yourselves, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Later.